Hello and welcome back to another tutorial by Flavane. Today we are going to be talking through object pooling, which is a slightly intermediate task, but I'll try to make it as quick and as easy to understand as possible. Object pooling is a great way to optimize your projects and lower the burden that is placed on the CPU when having to rapidly create and destroy game objects. The idea is that these objects get created at runtime and then they get recycled and reused. Most commonly this is seen inside of things like shooting bullets, which is why I've got this tutorial today. So we're going to have a look at this 2D space shooter game. And on the left hand side here, you'll see that I am shooting these bullets. And what's happening is each time uh, I create a bullet, I make a new one on the left hand side. And if, it, if a bullet hits an enemy or if the bullet flies off the screen, it will then destroy the bullet. So we're going to find a more optimized way to do this. Hey guys, I'm actually at the end of the video and I just realized that I haven't told you where you can get your package from. So we'll do that now and we'll just pretend I did it at the very start. So inside of the package manager, there's a game created by DinV Studios called Space Shooter Free. I really recommend using this. And even if you're new to Unity as well, it can teach you a whole lot just about coding in general, just by reading through the way that some of the problems are handled, things like collisions and triggers and so on. So yeah, there's a lot to learn from it and it's nice and free, so check it out. So before we start writing any code, it's good to see how these objects are created and destroyed at the moment. So we can understand when we've made the change, what was different and how you can implement it in your own project. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the way the bullet gets created, which is inside of the player shooting script attached to the player. This bullet here is controlled through the make a shot function. This make a shot function basically instantiates a game object based off a prefab at a location and then with a certain rotation. This is called create laser shot because it's just an instantiate function here. Passes in effectively the same things, it just looks a little nicer and adds this quaternion Euler. So that's the creation of bullets. Now bullets can be destroyed in two ways. The first is if the bullet misses the target, misses any ships and instead hits a boundary. In that case, if I flick on Gizmos quick, you can see that this hits here, it will then destroy the bullet. So in that, that is just if the bullet collides with the border, then all that's gonna happen is it's gonna destroy that game object. The second way it can be destroyed is through a projectile. So the projectile itself is looking to see if it is fired from the player and if it hits an enemy, and if it does, then it calls this destruction function. The destruction function is just a destroy of that game object. So everything for object pooling is generally held inside of one script, and then it is used and replaced in all of those places where we've been creating and destroying items. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a C-sharp script. We're gonna name it object pooler, and then we're gonna open it up in whatever code editing tool you're using. For me, that is Visual Studio. Now I'm going to put all the code in and then I'm going to explain it because I find it can be quite long if I start explaining as I, as I code. So I will be back in a second with all of this coded and then we'll walk through how this works. Okay, so this is the code we're gonna be working with. You can see from here, we've got four public variables. Firstly, a public static object pooler. Uh, and we instantiate this in the awake function. This is just so that this could be called from other scripts a bit easier. It's only ever gonna be in the scene once. Um, so a public static version of this is perfectly fine. Then we're gonna have a list of game objects called pooled bullets. These are all of the bullets that you have to work with. When you're looking to recycle bullets, it will all come from this pool here. The game object bullet to pool, this replaces the prefab. So effectively it knows what the bullet actually is that it's gonna be creating. And this is the amount of bullets that you wanna have. So think of this as like your ammo clip. It can have a size of 60. You can say, I've got 60 bullets that I'm able to fire at any given time. Now, then we have an awake function. This is just setting the instance to this script here that allows us to reference it in other scripts. And because it's in awake, it obviously allows us to reference it before the start function of other scripts. Inside of the start method, we are going to be setting up the pool of game objects that we want to have inside of this inside of this list here. So our pooled bullets is a new game object list. And then we're gonna create a temporary game object here, which will have a reference to the bullets that we're adding into our list. So we've got a for loop here. This for loop is going to be instantiating our prefab bullet, and it's gonna be setting it to false. And then we're gonna add it to our list of bullets. Now, the reason why we set it to false is because we're creating 
maybe 60 or so bullets at the very start of the game. We don't want them all to be active at once because they'll all just fly off the screen and then you won't have any bullets. So by setting them to false, they just are ready but in waiting to be used. Then we've got the second script here, uh, public game object get pulled bullet. So this will return type game object. If you've never used these before, most functions you would have used return type void, which means they don't return anything. In this case, we're returning a game object. So that means we need to have this return in here, which allows us to then return out the game object that we're going to be using. And effectively, all this script here is going to do is it is a for loop to work out which bullets are currently available to be fired. So when you're firing out of a list of let's say 60 bullets and six of them are already on the screen, you can't fire those six because they've already been fired. So all that this script is doing is it's finding one that hasn't been fired yet or isn't currently firing. And then it's gonna say, okay, use this bullet next. So that's done through a for loop of the amount of bullets that you have. We're looking for a bullet that is not active in the hierarchy currently. And then we're just saying, give us that bullet. Update function, not necessary, we can get rid of that. Now this is uh, object pooling basically completed. For this project here, I thought it would be nice to re-add in the function that they've got called create laser shot. So I created an object pooling version of create laser shot. It makes it a bit nicer inside of the code, otherwise you're gonna be writing something like this every single time. So I've created a public void create bullet and that one takes in a vector three for the position and a vector three for the rotation. We are then going to create a game object called bullet and it's going to be the bullet that we're returning out of this get pulled bullet. So the next available bullet for us to shoot. We're then gonna set our bullet to the position that we've inserted as well as the rotation that we've inserted. And then we're gonna set the bullet to active. The set active here is very important because remember when we created these bullets, we set them to false. So when we actually want to fire them visually, we need to make sure that we're setting them to true because all of the scripts and everything that run off those bullets will only actually activate when the game object is set to true. So now that we've got the base script for how object pooling works, let's have a look at how we replace the current code inside of our project. So in our player script, we have our bullet and it is looking to see if it collides with an enemy. If it does, we call this destruction script. We can keep the destruction script there for now so we don't have to change any other code. So instead, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting this game object because remember this is attached to the bullet. We're just gonna set it to false. So all that will do is if I collide with the player, that bullet is then just gonna turn off and wait till the next time it's available. In the boundary script, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. So in here, where we're firing a projectile, if the projectile hits the wall, instead what we're gonna be doing is, remember this time we need a reference to the bullet, so it's gonna be collision.gameObject.setActive to false. So now we'll never destroy a bullet anymore, that's great, but the creation of bullets will keep happening. So now we've dealt with the destruction of the game object, but we haven't dealt with the instantiation of the game object. But just as a, an example of what we've done so far, let's jump into the inspector and let's add our object pooler script to the game controller. In that game controller, I'm gonna say I wanna pull, because there's not actually many bullets in this game, I'm gonna say 30. And I'm gonna drag in my prefab of my bullet. So it is in projectiles and I'm taking my player's laser. So now let's run through what this actually looks like when I hit play. So I'm gonna save the game real quick, then hit play. Now what you'll see here, if I pause, is, turn on my gizmos off, is I've got, I've created 30 lasers and you can see them on the left hand side that I've created 30 of them. Now you can also see that I fired three of them. So three of my lasers are currently being instantiated and that's because we haven't dealt with the creation side of this. But what you will see is we've dealt with the delete side of this. So all of these start hitting objects and they start turning off. So instead of being deleted like they used to be, I'm just setting them to inactive. But the problem that we've got at the moment is that I'm not using these ones here. So to, in order to use those ones, instead of instantiating them, what we're gonna be doing inside of our script here is in the player shooting, we're gonna use a different function to create our bullets. So the very first thing that I would do is remember how we created that object pooler.instance 
And remember that we can do this without a reference to the game object because we created a public static object pooler named instance and then set that in the awake function. So I'm able to call functions from outside of that script. If you've never used it before, um, I recommend maybe just doing a little bit of reading on it. It's quite useful. It's very good in larger projects. Uh, and all my create bullet function is going to use is remember a vector three pos and a vector three rotation. So I'm going to just steal that from this function right here, paste that in, put a semicolon at the end. And remember, I don't need to say I'm using the project, uh, the prefab here because I'm actually, I've already said what the prefab is because I've got the bullet for it. So I've already dealt with the game object. All I need to do is decide where it's going to be. So. I will comment out this line of code for now. And then I will hit play. And now what we'll see is instead of creating those bullets after the initial 30 gets created, instead all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start reusing these bullets. So you can see the hierarchy, even though there's other bullets and so on in the scene, ignoring the enemy stuff for now. You can see that all of my bullets just get reused, and I'm only ever really at the moment using about four maximum. And then obviously I haven't done the rest of the scripts, so we'll update that in a second, but it stops using the pool for now. So let's do that now. I'm going to probably cut this part because it's quite long. So all effectively I'm going to be doing is replacing each of these create laser shots with the vector3 pause and vector3 rotation of my create bullet function. I will do the first one here and then I'll just update the rest. So what we have is this here and remember this time instead of using central gun, I'm just using my right gun. Comment that out and then just do the rest of them. Okay, so now that we've updated our make a shot function, this is what it turns out like. You can see here I've, I've kept the commented lines of code in so you can see everywhere where it used to be creating a bullet and you can also see the way that it creates it now. The only thing that really changes inside of all of this is the position of the gun that you're using. So you either, ha either have a right gun, a central gun, or a left gun. And the vector three rotation changes slightly as well. So you've got a negative 15 for your right gun, negative five for your right gun, 15 for your left gun, that's a typo, or five for your left gun. And then the other ones for the base levels are just vector three dot zeros. So I'll then go back to the game scene. We can have a look at what this will look like when we hit play now. And now this time we've created our 30 bullets, but now when I collect upgrades and I start to fire more bullets, what you'll see is more of this will get filled out, but I'll never end up hitting the point where I'm actually using everything inside of the pool. So let's just play it for a little bit. Hopefully I don't, I'm good at video games and I won't kill myself. And these are the upgrades we're looking for. So you can see now I start to fire two bullets instead, and you can see that it starts to use more of them, but it still doesn't even get close to the capacity we've used. And at the end of the day, all this has really cost us is the creation of 15 game objects, uh, which is pretty much nothing in comparison to what it was doing before, because I've probably fired around, you know, 70, 80 bullets already. And this is the final level here. You can see I'm still, I'm using a, a fair chunk of them, but I'm nowhere near using the actual capacity of my pool and my CPU would be doing basically nothing in comparison to what it was before. And keep in mind that ultimately this is just a, a template for what it will look like in the future. You could do this for four, five, six hundred bullets at once. And if you've ever played any of these space games before, you'll know that this is quite common. They just end up firing lasers all over the screen. So you can object pull that. I could be object pulling the enemy's bullets as well. And in this case, we, we do run into a little bit of an issue with this by reusing the destruction function here, because I'm actually also setting if the bullet hits a boundary or if it hits um, a, the player itself, instead it's just gonna turn off and we have an object pulled the enemy's bullets, but it's maybe, maybe take that as a task to take away, try create an object pooler for the enemy's bullets as well. It's effectively gonna be the exact same as what you've got inside of here, but it's just gonna be a slightly different bullet prefab that you're going to be using. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you have learned how to object pool well, and hopefully that wasn't too confusing. If you would like to see something explained simply in another video, please let me know what that is in the comments below. 
please do the whole like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I will be hoping to do these weekly. So the more ideas you can give me, the more tutorials I can pump out. All right, thanks all. Bye. The set active is very true. Very true. <laughs>